Hello, hello there, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another week's Q&A. Make your home your castle. This is Pierre with Art of Clean, and today I'm coming to you with four very exciting questions and helping you solve those challenges around the home that you might not have us totally ready for to come and help you with. Because of all this mess going on at the moment, I know you might be sitting there and thinking, how am I going to do that? There's also might be some of you that are ready to have our services. And for those, I would say we are ready to receive you. Nicola is ready to answer your phone call. So reach out to, out to us and we'd be happy to help. So before I kick off today's Q&A, I have very exciting news. Last week, I answered the question for Felicity. Felicity is a lovely lady that lives in the local area. And as you can remember, she had a problem with those tiles in the bathroom. What happened was there was a leak and some of those marble tiles had to come up. They had to be broken to lift. And then when she had to fill it back in, she realized the tiles do not match the existing floor. So she came to us asking, how can she polish the, old, the new tiles that don't match the same sheen level up so that it can match the floor? Or at least match the floor as good as it can. So what I did was I invited Felicity around. She brought the tiles. We had a look at them. And I went ahead and I polished it for them. There was only a few, and she, because she brought it to me, I didn't charge it for it. Now, here's the exciting thing. Felicity runs a little shop called Balkan Pottery. Felicity, if you're watching this video, I just want to say thank you so much, because what you did was above and beyond, and I truly appreciate it. So, Felicity told me the story how they traveled to the Balkans, and uh, they then found this uh, place, Balkan Pottery. And she then started selling after searching long and hard. As far as I have the story right, they went somewhere and they saw these items. And she particularly looked for, if I remember right, this particular piece. And um, after a long search, she found it. And then she started a small business selling these items. Now, for those of you that know me, I am very passionate about local business. Here at Art of Clean, if I do need to buy anything, I will first look around the local area and then I go a little bit further if I have to. I'm passionate about supporting small business because I only think it's fair as I expect you to support small businesses like us. Why shouldn't I do the same? And that's the reason why I spoke to her a little bit. And when she came to pick up the tiles, she brought me a few presents. Here's what she brought me. Let me see if I can show you. Um, so she brought me this. I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit so you can see it better. I'm showing you this item. And this is what you cook a chicken in. Let me show you on the computer screen. That's what it does. So on the screen there, you'll see the, the, this, the, the chicken is resting beautifully inside this pot. And you cook this in the oven and you fill it with your veggies and your rice and all the other things. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, before I stuff the chicken in there to cook it, I thought I'll quickly make this video and say thank you to Felicity. Now, to make it very exciting and involve everybody, Felicity has also been so kind to give me one of these beautiful wine decanters. So this has got a stand and you can put one or maybe even two, maybe even a little bit more bottles of wine inside this. And what I said to Felicity, I'll make one of these available to our big prize at the end of these sessions. So at the end of this series, I'm drawing a prize to those people that's taken part, submitted your questions, and we will be giving these items away. So far, there are four major prizes, sorry, three major prizes. What we have is the big prize of a thousand pounds of service from Art of Clean to you. You can have your floor sanded, you can have your stone floor cleaned, you can have your carpets done, you can get your upholstery done, your patio clean. Maybe you've got a few rugs to be done. Maybe you have a combination of those items. That's our first prize. And there's no strings attached. As long as you are, you are in our area, we'll happily carry that out for you. Following that, we also have over there our SIBO vacuum cleaner. We have the SIBO Felix, a beautiful machine, nice and light, up the stairs, clean and vacuum carpets beautifully. It's quite popular. And that comes just around the 300 pound mark. And then other than that, we also have a beautiful Persian rug that's rolled up behind me. I don't want to be rude and turn around. Uh, you have seen the rug before if you've been watching this series. And now, the exciting bit, we also have this beautiful wine decanter. So for those of you interested, please head over to Balkan Pottery. Let me show you that page again. That's the one over there. And uh, to give Felicity a few moments of, of, of things. 
This would be the item that we'll be giving away. This wine decanter just here. This is the one. And um, she has been kind enough to also offer me this pot to cook the chicken in. This one over here. So um, please head over there. Support the small business. And I know she would appreciate it. Felicity, lastly, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm glad we could add value to you. How do I get Coca-Cola and chocolate butter birthday cake out of a sizal carpet after the kids have trampled playing musical chairs. Now it looks like I've messed up on a heck of a party there. Um, now a little while ago, I think on my first session, I did talk about the sizal carpet. So if you remember right from that session, let me just bring that up again. Sorry, my, my shopping for today. This is my sizal carpet. So my sizal carpet is the one I talked about before, which is very difficult to clean. In fact, nearly impossible to clean because if you clean it, it shrinks. It's a fiber that's extremely absorbent and it absorbs the water as well in size. And that's the reason why you have this carpet shrinking easily when you wet it, clean it. So for that reason, if you get a mark on it, it is very difficult. But listen, these videos are not to give you all the bad news. These videos are to help you to do the best you can do until you may be right to have our services. Okay, so David, I really want to help you. Let's better understand what David's problem is by looking at what I have on my desk here. So what I have, I have sugar and I have some butter. So sugar and butter, this is what is mainly in that mixture that is causing us some trouble. The only other thing we have here is of course the cocoa or the chocolate that's causing staining there. Notice the salt is for another item. So we have a mixture of butter and sugar and then of course the cocoa that creates the tanning stain that leaves those marks. And the big problem we have is it's inside the size of carpet. Now we start by saying, you know what, unfortunately, David, because it's the size of the carpet, you're probably going to have to live with that mark. But I want to help you understand that problem as best you can. And also anybody else watching this video, what can you do? Let's say you might not have that problem on a size of carpet, but any other carpet, what would you do? It's very important to start by understanding what is the problem. So what we have here, first of all, is butter. Now I do know this is margarine. You know what? It's very close to the same thing. Although some of us, including myself, would tend to differ with that. Um, we have an oily stain. An oily stain will be a specific thing that you cannot just remove with water or a general stain remover. It needs something a little bit more. So it is going to need a bit of a solvent to remove that oily mark. So if you do see a, a greasy stain on the floor, on the floor, on the carpet, and that might have been caused by butter, then the best thing, I'm going to go back to the one I've used in my previous videos, is a little bit of surgical spirit. Surgical spirit would break that butter down. Um, of course, you can use a detergent, but you would need to use quite a bit. And that means, especially on a sizal carpet, you will overwet that and the ring would just become very big. So what I would do in, a, in, the, in this case, David, I would scrape up as much as I can. And unfortunately, that musical chairs has taken place. So I don't know what is the solution there. You may have it severe, and for that reason, I would say maybe best to get us out to try and rinse, extract that with a warm solution, but you're very likely to sit with a mark. If there is a buttery stain, that left oil stain, then you can try a little bit of surgical spirit on a, on a towel. Just dab it gently. Be careful to rub it because that can upset the pile. Uh, that's what we would do there. On the sugar front, so of course the cake has got sugar in, the best thing there would be to use your detergent or water mix. Now, unfortunately, that will leave a mark on this on the sides or carpet um so i would say in this case david best to give us a call send me some photos of this problem and we can come by but i do think you would need to accept there is going to be a mark where that is it is not great news uh next time maybe uh try and play that musical chair somewhere not on the sides of carpet i would say but you're more than welcome to reach out and you never know we might be able to help um i have cleaned sizal carpets before and going totally against the grain and people have said listen if it shrinks it shrinks because we're going to have to replace it anyway and there has been times where i've been successful but that is a very rare occasion i would not advise to get this done um, it is only as a last resort uh, brad is asking if it's true that if we take white wine and we pour it onto the red wine stain that might have happened on a carpet 
Is it true that it will remove it? Brilliant question, by the way, because we do get that from time to time. In fact, there's another version of that question that we also get, and that is, can I use some salt on that stain? So, salt and wine stains. Let's do that, and then I'm going to go to Brad's wine idea. Salt on a stain has come around because people think, oh, you know what, it would absorb the wine, and then I can wipe the salt up, or when it's dry, I can vacuum it up. And unfortunately, that's old wives' tales. So here's what happens. If you go and buy a little box of colored dye that you would maybe dye your jeans with in the washing machine, or if you dye a shirt, a dye lawn in particular, what's the one item you will add to the washing machine when you use a dye? <laughs> You've guessed it. It is salt, and a lot of it. And it's because the salt will set the stain. So, if you are going to put some salt on the wine stain that's on your carpet, you will probably find that even us won't remove it. So, I would advise do not put the salt on the wine stain, but Brad is up the right street. So, Brad said, can I add the white wine and will it really deal with the problem of the red wine stain? Absolutely, Brad, but do yourself a favor. Save the wine. Get it in the fridge. What you'd rather want to do, go and get yourself some Vinegar, white vinegar, and it's important to be white because otherwise uh, malt vinegar that's not distilled has got the brown color to it, so it can mark a light colored carpet. Nice distilled white vinegar, and what you want to do is you want to get yourself a cup, you want to get yourself some water, and you want to mix about a 50-50 mixture of the vinegar and the water, and then what you want to do is you now have that mixture and if we imagine there's a stain on this carpet which i could probably have created you want to dab some of that onto the stain then you want to use a white cotton towel nice and clean nice and absorbent and you want to use that and you want to then dab the stain and basically what it would do is it would dilute that wine down and absorb it into your towel. And the acidicness of that vinegar solution, as is the uh, acidicness of the white wine, will deal with that red wine stain. I have seen very few people being really successful at this. The thing is, you don't do it every day. So where we would be dealing with it every day and we actually have a special acidic product that comes to deal with that and actually hide the wine stain. Um, we would be more successful, but if you're careful and you do this, you may be lucky if it's only a small stain. Now, of course, as you can see there, I've now wet this out and there's a big old patch. So what would you do? You can now go ahead, use a cotton towel like I have here. And what you want to do is lay that dry cotton towel on there. Once you've absorbed all that, you want to lay something heavy on top like a book or something like that but what you want to do if your towel is not as thick as mine and you have a worry that that moisture might seep through lay yourself a, a plastic sheet down go and get your black bin liner tear that off lay it over that and then lay your book down lay it there till the following day and then lift that and you should see that moisture seeped into the towel and if there's any wine it would now sit in the towel rather than in the in the carpet so that would help greatly. If that fails, then best to give us a call so that we come and read that for you. But to recap on Brad's question, save the white wine for the following night. Don't waste it. Get yourself some water, distilled white vinegar um, and use that acidicness in the water with a 50-50 mix and put it on there and absorb it with a cotton towel. So Brad, thanks so much for that question. Now, here's an interesting one. Um, we have a question from Rob. Rob recently asked us to come and have a look at the pine floor and Rob's question is can this pine floor successfully be restored as well as economically be restored? Let's have a look at this picture. So Rob sent this as, as this floor uh, and you can see the floor there and what you notice and you can see it in this area this has been uh, covered over and it has been patched up. You can see these splotches of what looks to be some concrete of some sort um, has gone all over the floor and there's also that black ring around the edge which years ago they would have uh, painted around the edge and have had a carpet in the middle 
and then if we scroll down you can see more of that and more importantly I've created this small picture over here you can see that massive gap there and then you can also see the end of the board that has been really battered with screws and nails and all that and even if we sound this floor you're never going to get a good result from that um, so it is a big problem in this case and here's why here's why it's a big problem the plaster and the and the cement that we see on that floor have got quite a lot of alkaline in it there's so many chemicals in a, in, a, in a cement mixture i mean if you take a cement mixture and you stick your hand in and you leave it too long you can have chemical burns on your hand now imagine that happens on your floor now what would happen is that spills on the floor and it can happen if people plaster the wall as well as you plaster the wall that falls down the plaster goes and clean that floor up and the floor sander comes around look at it doesn't see anything and go ahead and sand the floor what would then happen is we will go ahead and oil the floor or, or lacquer the floor and immediately there's a chemical reaction because some of that uh, some of that chemicals in the cement and all the plaster are soaked into the wood and now it reacts with the with the finish and dressing on the floor. That was not visible before because the plaster cleaned it up. Now in this case we can clearly see from those photos that uh, there is clearly those cement patches on there and when we sand that floor you will likely find that there's going to be blotches all over the floor where those cement patches have been. And then Rob would think, well, now I've spent money on a floor and, uh, you know, it's not the price of a new floor, but it's not far off and uh, this floor looks absolutely horrible. And then in addition, if we then look at, uh, let's go back to that, let's look at the, the gaps here. I want to show you the gaps. You see those big gaps there and you see the holes here. Now, of course, somebody might say, well, we, you can just lift that board out and lay a new one in. Yes, you can do that, but it is not guaranteed that the color would match. And uh, that is also a problem because now you have blotchiness on the floor, you've got a plank that doesn't look the same, and by the time you spend a good 65 pounds a square meter, 75 pounds a square meter, for all this extensive work to repair the floor, resand it, fill the gaps, do all these things, and then the finish goes on, you now have patches on the floor. And I just feel as a business owner, you know what, I don't want to take somebody's money and look at the floor myself and think, goodness me, that looks horrendous. I'd rather lose a job and let somebody go and find a new floor and place that in and then they are happy even though sadly it hurts because now they have to spend a bit more than they thought now the benefit with us is we can advise on new flooring because we also have a flooring division that supplies and install flooring um, so we can always advise you accordingly and, and, and you know we just rather lose out on sanding the floor and have a happy customer than to think we can fix it and then it doesn't look right. So my advice on this to anybody that has got a floor like that is go ahead and con consider the cost of a new floor versus the cost of a restoration of a floor and the price you'll pay for having that. In Rob's case, we know that pro Rob will probably pay in the region of about 65 to 75 pounds a square meter to have this floor restored. We know that there's gaps on the floor, the color of the boards that we lay in will look different and we also know there's a likely chance that the um, patchiness on the floor would, would, would appear because of those blotches of the cement and, and plaster. Now, if you compare that to a new floor, Rob would probably pay in the region of 100 to 120 pounds for an engineered floor to lay, be, be installed in there. And then you consider, well, you know what, for an extra 30 to 40 pounds per meter, he can have a beautiful oak floor that can be sanded two times again after it's been installed and it looks absolutely perfect. So there is those things to consider. And I would say, call us if you have any questions. Now, let's move on to the last question for the day. This one came from Jennifer. Now, Jennifer has been a client of ours before, and Jennifer asked, uh, said that she had uh, recently allowed a large perfume candle to burn without notice, and it was smoking. It was a metal lantern with a slight chimney. The result was the smoke was low down, curtains were drawn across, so stain followed the contours of the curtains and the sofa, appearing as a snake writing across the yellow carpet. That's the sofa, it's a sideways picture, and uh, you can see there that the mark that has been formed has followed the contours of the, um, of the sofa. So this is the sofa, and the um, side of the the side of the sofa has caused has followed the contours so that means that the um 
The smoke in the air has cooled down and it fell lower to the floor. And then it hung at the bottom of the floor. And then at the side, there was likely a radiator on or something caused air movement. There's always air movement in a room. And the air movement then grabbed this air that contained the smoke and it pulled it underneath the sofa. The sofa had a skirt that sat right down on the carpet. Let me show you. I'm going to use my uh, little close-up uh, camera here. And I'll be using this paper to show you the example. So what would have happened is you would have had the skirt of the sofa that lowered itself, was very low down on the carpet, but there was still a little, small little tiny gap below this. The, the, the air had cooled down and lowered itself down and that contained the smoke from the candle or the contaminants. And then the air started pulling from underneath the skirt. And what has happened was that these fibers are standing up, your skirt sitting above, just like that, and then the air finds its way through the fibers, and with it carries the pollutant um, or the smoke. And this then caused that pollutant to stick to the fibers. And that's also why you would see that it would have followed a line. You can see the line there. That it followed the line of the, the fiber, and here this would have been a curtain that sat, and this has followed the line of the curtain. Uh, she had a cleaner out to attempt the clean of this. Unfortunately, they were not successful. Um, and this was a curtain that would have followed. And the, again, the heat and the cold, the movement of the air would have carried that through. And it carried it just at that point where the curtain or the skirt of the uh, upholstery sit on the carpet and pulls it right through. It is a very similar effect as to the um, uh, what's called draft marking or uh, draft marking is when uh, you have pollutants in the air move through and especially if you go and open your airing cupboard um, and there's of course your boiler inside or your heater tank um, you will find that the air pulls in under the door and goes escape somewhere at the top and because of that when you open the door in the airing cupboard you'll find where the door sits there's a black mark under the door and it's because of that airflow that comes through and the other place where you'll see it is um, if you live nearby a busy road or a busier road, well, sometimes the road doesn't even have to be that busy, um, especially on your first, second, and if you have a further floor up, you will find that um, the, because of the air movement, the, the heating creates warm air, the warm air moves through the building, and then where the carpet goes at the edge of the room, it flows around the edge of that carpet and comes filtration mark, air movement, and, and that sort of thing, and that leaves that mark. That mark's not always removable. There's a specific type of cleaner we need to use to remove those marks or give ourselves the best chance to remove it. I talked about it in my first video when I spoke about the, um, the soot. If you have a chimney sweep come in to sweep the chimney and there's soot everywhere, what would you do? So it's a similar thing. It's cationic. So you want, uh, you want a cationic cleaner to remove that. Now, that's a specific chemical term. Um, the magnetic fields of the cleaner, the magnetic fields of the, uh, the soot or the, 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 the smoke, um, that's what you would need to use to remove that. Um, so just consider that scrubbing at those marks can sometimes make it worse. So my advice would be call a professional to deal with them because if you've dealt with them and you dealt with them in the wrong way, the scrubbing caused that to go further into the carpet, you're really going to struggle then to get it out. So if I look back at this photo here, where this uh, curtain line is, and somebody has already attempted at cleaning that, it is very unlikely we'll totally remove that mark, but you know what, we can absolutely give it the best go, and at least those that hasn't been touched before, we will have a good chance of getting them. So let's go over to say thank you to... David, to Brad, to Rob, to Jennifer, and I also want to say thank you so much to Felicity for this lovely prize that we're now going to add in to the end. And now, of course, we come to the exciting bit to today's whole session, and that is heading over to the wheel. Now, let me get my little uh, remote. This is it. And let's head over to the wheel. So, over to the wheel, and our lights are on, and we have our people on the board, everybody that has joined in today. So, we have Brad, we have Jennifer, we have David, and we have lots of spins again, and then we come around to Rob. So, for today's prize, I would like to remind you what is on offer. So, you get a lovely Utsen shirt, and I want to shout out to Utsen and say thank you so much 
So what Utsun do is they are part of the Pelman uh, group of companies. Pelman and Utsun belong to the same group, the Utsun Ut group. And they do Utsun, uh, do all the subfloor preparation products. That is the uh, leveling compounds, smoothing compounds, DPNs, the damp-proof membranes, as well as the glues that stick the floors down. So they basically do everything that goes under the floor. And then we also have that beautiful company, Palman, which we're so fond of, and uh, they do everything that goes on top of the wood floor. Um, so uh, we have these beautiful shirts, and I include two of them um, coming from Utsun, and I want to say thank you so much to Utsun uh, for supplying those. So today's prize, we'll give away that, and then we have the cleaning kit from Palman, which unfortunately I don't have here, but I can show you inside the cleaning kit, you'll get a uh, care product for your uh, wooden floors and also a mop to clean the floors with. So that's our prize we give away just to say thank you. And everybody's names is then entered into the main draw at the end of the series. So let's head over to the spin where the, the wheel of fortune and we see who's our winner today. Come on, baby, do it for us. Here we go. Ooh, 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 it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Oh, it's Jennifer, it's Jennifer. It is Jennifer. There we go. Jennifer, thank you so much. Well done. It's heading over to you. So what we're going to do is pop some shirts in the post. We'll also send you the Palman cleaning kit. And to everybody here today, thank you so much. You're welcome to submit another question if you like. And thank you for taking part. Thank you for joining me today. For all those other people leaving comments on the Facebook Live, I try and pay attention to the camera. So I don't necessarily see your comments, but I know you're there and I really appreciate it. It's all over and out for me today. You have yourself a lovely week until I see you next time. Thank you now. Bye.